I like to sing. Someone was suspected of being responsible, but it was all hushed up. Um. Oh, I you know that other place we used to be, um, where the lightning bolts come down from the sky, like. <laughs> uh, Carl, do you remember the, the who what I'm talking about? Like, yep. Um, um, get on the mic, guy. Like, uh, yep. Yeah. What was it called? Radio Titans. Radio Titans. That's right. Um, oh, who I understand they're they're still in great shape. They're doing real good. I see they have a whole bunch of celebrities coming through there. I keep getting peppered with. Um, <laughs> listen to this episode of Dot Jones from um, Glee. Yeah, we have got some others coming in. So yeah. Sure, sure. I, I, it's just um, I um, I get advertised for that episode a lot. It's like somehow like I'm on I'm on a list. But it's good to be back here. Hey, they, oh my gosh, this is Jake Belcher. Uh, this is usually my one shot, but I have someone else joining me. Uh, Ian Salmon, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I've never uh, been in this part of town. I didn't even think they did radio down here. Fili <laughs> Filipino oh. town, yes. It's, a, it's, the, it's, or, the uh, new, it's the new hub of, uh, of uh, internet radio. That's the voice right. of uh, our other, our other co-host, uh, right. Brent Thoman. Thank uh, you have, you. Do we have a shot for you tonight? Uh, yes, give me a second to get that up here. Okay, great. Uh, I, I just didn't know if it was set up With extra that mics and such, I'm on a little extra Sure, sure, we're running here. a little late. Uh, it's been a real lazy week here around um, the Zen Studios. Like, it's just been one of those weeks where everything's kind of been off, so like we're a couple minutes late. Um, but we do have someone else joining us in the studio. Uh, Brent, do we have Dan on? On one of our yes, I do. Just talks. a second here, right there. All right. Uh, hey, Dan, how you doing, man? I'm doing terrific. This Jake, is uh, Dan Koontz. Uh, he is uh, a long time someone that Brent and I have known for 20 plus years. As yeah, we all crazy. went to high school together. It's crazy, huh? Yeah. And uh, recently, he asked me to be part of a film project that he was working on. Thank you for doing that, Jake. Uh, uh, thanks for asking me. Like uh, it was a, a like a two week um, film project where I think you had to work on other people's films and. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, it's the Collaboration Filmmakers Challenge. It's the third year uh, that we've done it. It's totally fun. Worked on a bunch of movies. Dan, can like you do me a favor? Can you get a little closer to the mic or pull, sure it, or pull it closer to you, whichever makes you most comfortable, <clears throat> just so I can get a better... Great. I sure can. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, that's real good. Is that too much? Very good. No, no, no. no, no perfect. No, perfect. Straddle yeah. that perfect. mic. Yes, exactly. I'm a heavy breather, so <laughs> that's uh, fine. I don't want to freak that, out. That, that, I can, that I can compensate from for better than not being able to hear you. Old right, fans true. of the show like uh, have tuned in for heavy breathing for years. Correct, Carl? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so this is this is a big lure for many of our fans. Like, uh, we have a old favorite in the community and maybe a new um, contender in the area. Okay, so we have a uh, stand-up comic, filmmaker, and um, America's Funniest Reporter, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Oh, Carl Kozlowski. How are you doing this week, Carl? All right, how are you? Excellent. Uh, so this is a little bit different than how we normally start our show. Usually we like to get in here and kind of riff on whatever garbage we had going on. But uh, today there was a, uh, you know, a... a a sad national incident uh, that uh, you know I think we all wanted to be able to chime in on and say what our feelings were on it so it didn't feel right to save them for the next uh, segment uh, so uh, what happened today was um, at a apparently baseball practice but I don't think it was really a baseball practice I think it was some type of media event to make kids believe that baseball was good but um, we'll, we'll, like, <laughs> hey, look, man, everything with me is a goddamn conspiracy theory, right? <laughs> so look, they're going to call it a baseball practice, but I guarantee you that this, there's no senators out there who had, like, um, you know, were chalking up on the bat and getting ready to Was take it really swings. baseball? Cause Bilderbergs. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was softball. They're not playing baseball. They're not playing yeah. hardball. There's no way, right? There's just no <laughs> way that I believe Have these senators. Have you seen your congressman and senators? <laughs> so, yeah. so apparently this guy comes out and um, decides to open fire. On um, this event, it gets 50 shots off, uh, ends up uh, shooting one of our congressmen. Does anybody know what this guy's name is? Uh, uh, Scalise. 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 Steve Scalise. Steve, Steve, Steve well informed. Yeah. Scalise. Scalise. Um, is, yeah. Shot in the hip. Um, mm. You know, not a fun place to get shot. Not that I'm sure there are fun places to no. get shot. Mm. Uh, but I, I feel... <laughs> I, I feel like this whole thing is a big media manipulation already. And like every story 
is about how it's a Bernie Sanders supporter. They've oh, already, really? They've already sp- spun it to... Yeah. To, oh, uh, I didn't know that. I know. A particular, <laughs> it's like, particular party, huh? Are, 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 I believe Bernie Sanders supporter <laughs> at one point. Uh, I know Bernie says Sanders supporter at one point. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. I love Bernie Sanders. How does it... But not anymore. Sure. He's t- commanding people to kill. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Whatever, right. So, like, are, are the, is there going to be a, a bunch of people who come out and... Net, and now say like a Bernie, you need to disavow this type of follower. Like I the, doubt the, it. You know, I mean, there's no way. Like, there's no call for accountability on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the liberal side. Well, I, I, they I, beg I, for, <laughs> they fucking suck the dick for. That's so we can say. <laughs> Unlike the, the conservative good. side, man. Granted, he also didn't go out there and say he was doing this in the name of Bernie Sanders. He was a we supporter. Don't know we don't know that yet. I mean, I do see a lot of Bernie Sanders uh, bumper stickers out there. Sure, so, you know, sure. Saying, a lot. No, I'm going to be a raised hey, eyebrow every I, time. I remember in 1992 uh, seeing a lot of Ross Perot stickers after he lost his thing. It is thing. weird, Coney 2012. 2012. The sticker of the losing side yep. on I mean, their but what car. is it with the Bernie Sanders? They're just, they're so, so underachieve. They underachieve. Like, they never really get the job done, do they? You know, You're right. They, you. this, this guy came out and he said he wanted, <laughs> to, he, wanted to, he wanted to he wanted to kill Republicans. Like it was his, his whole idea was to come out there and like get a whole bunch of them. He went to this event, um, you know, looking to kill Republicans. Didn't kill one of them. Your, your whole thing was yeah, uh, fifty shots. Yeah, man, hundred shots. I sped shot. up the hip replacement too. So. From him or because he was already in the works. Not him. Yeah. Hundred rounds. Right, that's enough. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna. Okay, so I, I know you are from the area, correct? I'm from Washington D.C. Well, I'm actually well, from. Uh, I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and uh, but I grew up in Washington D.C. Yes. Yeah, so so very how do familiar you feel then? Like, okay, like these guys then hear that. It's part of their political affiliation. You, it's from <laughs> that's, that's a gross <laughs> exaggeration. Sure it is. <laughs> and here's here, they're from your area, yeah. so like uh, you know, it's hitting home all around the place. Yeah, well, you know, here's the thing: a, a lot of people that are not from DC don't realize how how uh, like we're a bullseye. DC is a bullseye for every nutcase in the country. When they want to come and make a political mm-hmm. statement, they come to DC and they come that. to DC and do it. So and, and 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 not to mention the the other crimes that's going on in DC blocks away from the White House. So and, you know, you know, for tourists they don't really know the real DC. I I grew up in the real DC, so I kind of know what's going on, you know. But, so the, is, the, is this particularly shocking that this would happen here? Not then? to me. I yeah, kind of knew like kind of normal. I mean, with the political climate in this country and 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 and, and all the. The, the 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 bickering on social media and I mean it's, it was inevitable that's why I, that's why I said it's, I mean it's also DC for years we've yeah. seen that it's been a, a, an area of the country that is kind of just not run well yeah. because it really doesn't have the representation it needs mm-hmm. I mean the the mayor has to it, he gets his budget from Congress which is it's like it should be a shining city in this country that when you go to when you go to Washington DC you're not gonna see you know people who are for want of anything and that mm-hmm. there's no violence there's no need for for guns, that this is this I is the capital, at all, right? Like it's a terrible <clears throat> it's place. Not even We're, close, but it, it's, but it should be. Place. You do? Yeah. For, well, I mean, no. he just went there and he was raving. They got a spy museum. Too, no, it's a great I mean, place. Museums are neat. Yeah. Sure. Oh, sure. Spy <laughs> the <a> cultural <laughs> centers of uh, of DC are wonderful. Library, it's the uh, outskirts. Congress? The outskirts where people actually live. Okay, look, the I know very place. little. I know Dave Chappelle's <laughs> yeah. like, description of I driving know. through Washington DC. Yeah, I was about to about to tell you. I know Dave very well. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, but listen. Here's the thing about D.C. D.C. is a place. And people come in and they're de- they do their business and they leave. They go to Virginia. They go to Maryland. Mm-hmm. They go here. And then there's pockets of people who live in D.C. Mm-hmm. D.C. is not the same D.C. anymore. It's not Chocolate City anymore. Mm-hmm. And if you go over the bridge, over the, over, over the southeast Anacostia, it's a whole different world. It's like Chirac. <laughs> You know what I mean? Sure, it's, it's, it's dangerous it's, it's, for everybody, you know, right? Somebody get killed every day over yeah. there. So, so this doesn't seem like it's that the most shocking thing that this would happen. I there. mean, at least it's not no. some elementary school. That's true. You know, uh, at least think, there's think that. Think up for that. We have that going today on this one shooting. But give us a week, you know. <laughs> what, what was that? What was that? I missed that. Right? At least it's not some elementary school. But there, oh, yeah, but, right, but there yeah. were elementary school children there. I mean, literally, this the kid. This was not a baseball practice. I don't. I really don't know why they're calling that that. This was an event for like Washington D.C. area children to come out onto the oh, baseball. Yeah. yeah. So oh, like, I didn't realize. I say I don't know anything about this. Yeah. So like the whole thing was like it's a media event. To get children to think baseball's cool because they have to trick kids into that now. I'm wondering why they didn't. 
call it a terrorist <laughs> attack because it's kind of terrorist in nature. I mean, for to, sure. Yeah. To, to I mean, yeah, he's he's singling out you know one party that uh, must die. Republicans must die. Uh, time to take out Trump and company. He was posting on Facebook things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And th- th- this is this is the natural progression of what happens when you have Kathy Griffin holding up the head oh of my God. the president, and when you have or Guar. Sh- uh, sh- well, okay, every, no one expects anything good or normal from Guar. You know, <laughs> not that we should expect anything from Kathy Griffin either. <laughs> that's exactly that's the that's exactly the, the 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 basis of my outrage, and I think some of the people out there's outrage is that. You doing that, Kathy Griffin, you know, it provokes this type of behavior. It normalizes it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it would have been so clear, it would have been so beautiful if he would have said, I did it because of what Kathy did. <laughs> I would have been then he died. <laughs> She'd really be crying then. <laughs> she would have she shut up the firm and... <laughs> sure, I mean, this stuff is normalized. And I mean, moved like, out of Hollywood, but seriously. There is a, a production of uh, Julius Caesar going on oh, right yeah. now where they have... Basically, they've replaced Caesar with a Trump-like character. And the uh, when he dies at the end, uh, the, the crowd goes crazy and they love it. it it's, this is just um, normalizing violence against conservatives, Republicans, and and see that the thing is like like they hate Donald Trump because like they think that's what he is, but he's not even a conservative. He's not even a Republican. He's like a disruptor to the system that yeah. the conservatives yeah, and the Republicans hate equally. Like the Democrats and the Republicans both fucking hate this guy. So like um, to come out and say that we need to kill Republicans is short sighted. You only need to kill one guy. Jesus Christ, Here people! Jesus, people. yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. I disavow that last statement, even though it was by me. Uh, we have to go to break now. We're Not gonna come back. Here. We're gonna come back on the other side. And we're gonna talk about some good things. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, last week, and I had a wonderful moment of being thin that I can't wait to share with the audience and um, give it as Carl to some inspiration for the future. Because you're already losing weight, you know. Yes, I am. But you have to get a little bit uh, more to lose as much as me. Like now you're as big as I used to be. All right. <laughs> so I know what that's like, guy. Uh, and the terrible things you still must be facing. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that on the air. An immersive rock and roll show, Ultimate Jam Night. Everybody needs to go to every single Tuesday at the Whiskey A Go Go. Chuck Wright! How did the Ultimate Jam Night come about? Um, was that your brainchild? Yes, it was. Uh, it, what were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I created a monster. about a social gathering and that's what this is about it's about rebuilding the community of musicians again because you know all the clubs are closing the DJs have taken over you know DJs can't jam I actually have a killer house band uh, with Matt Starr well, yeah who, you do well, Matt Starr from Mr. Big who helps mm-hmm. organize the thing and Mitch Perry from Edgar Winter Group and uh, we just brought on Walter Eno from Survivor um, and having Paul Z sing We put other players with us, but we also put combinations of players mm-hmm. that have never played together before, like Nuno Betancourt from Extreme and Billy Sheehan from so Mr. Cool. Big have never played together before, and they're up there just shredding off of each other. News. We moved over to the Whiskey A Go Go, um, legendary venue, the only one in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, where I cut my teeth in Hollywood myself playing there. I was the guy putting up the, the posters for the shows on all the poles when you drive up Lowell Canyon when I was a kid. Yeah, I started here. The concept for this jam night was beyond just having the best musicians in LA play. I wanted to create a rock and roll circus. Organizing 40 to 70 musicians a week and I'm losing my mind. Rockstar is that. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, we're back here on Grand Theft Audio. This is Jake Belcher. And I'm Brent Thoman. Uh, we're back in studio with... Carl Kozlowski. Ian Salmon. Dan Coons. And uh, hey, before we left to break, I said that I wanted to share a moment of uh, recent thinness. So, uh, I love amusement parks. Amusement parks are awesome. I got a pass to, um, many years ago, to go to Magic Mountain, all that I wanted. I got up to the front of the line at Scream, like their big new coaster, and I was too fat to get on. Mm. Oh my god! Yeah, man. So like, I waited like for two hours in line with oh, some shit. other people around me in line, <laughs> and I was fucking ashamed. You know, <laughs> I was just like, too fat. It, what, the thing couldn't come. It down? couldn't. It couldn't click. Like, um, it, 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 that's it, not uh, a fun uh, moment. <laughs> no, it is not a fun moment at all, man. Um, <laughs> I've been there, but yeah, we've been together. I remember we went to Knott's Berry Farm a couple years later, and like, you you tried to get on some ride, and you couldn't click so like it, it, it was like you just said you just admitted yourself you've been there so i'm not i don't think that's ever happened to me yeah, I, well, I, good for you ian i, I mean the, the most likely thing would be i'm too drunk to get on a ride but I just, sure I, I i've been thrown out of parks for being too high right you know, because they could they could tell but they I've, not, I've met, i have not been able to get on rides because i'm too tall I, I, there, I, there are rides right, there are right. certain there rides are that they say yeah there are restrictions on site if you're yeah. high if you're taller than like six foot one you're not allowed on this ride because your feet are dangling yeah. and they've made everything so that you swoop by as oh, an right. average heighted person oh, yeah, so the the tall can't ride on those so there are so there are certain rides that i have missed out on by the ankle yeah exactly it's like so that. once i couldn't get on that ride like every time i've gone back to um magic mountain i haven't gotten on any of the new lines because i, I complained the whole time i wish they put a sample car out front so i could get in it and click in to see like <laughs> if i too fast to get on this thing or at no. the very least some kind yeah, of saying right. if you weigh more than this you, you may, may not be able to fit <laughs> yeah. into it I mean, that way he was like, we kind of warned you. You had the opportunity, but so for the last four rounds of the new rides, I, the lines have been an hour and a half long, and I haven't, I haven't had the balls to get in line with someone else and have their time be wasted. <laughs> so like, I felt bad. Uh, this week, uh, I ended up with some free time myself on Saturday, where I had no one with me. So I thought, okay, look, I've lost his weight. I'm going to go back, and I got on four new rides at Magic Mountain, nice, man. Nice, nice. Thank you. So that was really nice. Like, I, I got a day of feeling good about myself and feeling. Yeah, you've actually just with expanded the, the park to yes. for, for yourself. I mean, yes. where it's a, there's a section of the park that was off and, limits and to you for the longest time. And there's a brand new of the coasters. Like a, anybody who loves roller coasters has to go ride X2 now at uh, Magic Mountain. <laughs> it's incredible, man. Like it flips you around as it's going through the the, the uh. whole course. It, uh, it's incredible. Is, it's, is it a dangling one? Um, no. Like, so okay, you, no, you in actually, the sense that in the sense that I'm I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be am I too tall? To no, get you'll on be fine. My feet fine, dangling. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I saw some giants on there okay um, great but it, it, the seat is incredible it's like a big baby seat you know like how babies <laughs> get carried around yeah, yeah. You, you're, you're on your That's back and taken all around everywhere and you feel like a big baby it's really nice well, you, you are a big baby <laughs> let's make you wear a diaper that's weird. Uh, they, look, they didn't make me, but that lady paid extra. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, you got what you get, what you get. All right, so what else is going on in the world? Uh, that was my moment of greatness for the week. Moment of sadness for the week. Uh, the passing of uh, Adam West. Mm -hmm. uh, he is, um, you know, better known to us as the mayor of Quahog. Oh, sure. Fuck absolutely. you, Batman people. Sure. <laughs> they, they, you know. But I think everybody in this room grew yes. up with the re reruns of Batman. For sure. Did. Yeah, I did. I, yeah. yeah. I used to run home from school to watch him. Oh yeah! Drive out of that fake cave and just sure. shoot open. <laughs> a little door would come. To I mean, honestly, it, it's it's incredible that he had a a, a second resurgence in his career yeah. so many years later with like these voices and cartoons because that was the '60s, man. Like, who else from the '60s managed to be relevant until you know last week? There's just not that many You're right. uh, people. Mick Jagger. Sure, there a uh, great so Adam West should be on the level of a Mick first, Jagger, you know. In my book. And and uh, I, I remember that back in, in the late '90s there was a TV series that was coming out. I don't remember what station it was on, but he was in the pilot episode. And I remember seeing Adam West like, holy shit, it's Adam West. I was I was actually pretty stoked. Like the guy's working again. This is great. You know, the character he was portraying, he looked and fit the part perfectly. And he dies in the first in the pilot. In the mm. pilot episode, his character dies off, uh, and I was like, "Well, yeah, you I died just, in a pilot once you've too. just, you've Story just taken one of the reasons why I would have yeah, tuned in next week." Well, you probably didn't have the stamina gone. to do a whole season of the show. I mean, oh, come on! I mean, it, it, he was worn out. Oh, back, I mean, how, how much? That, I mean, that's twenty years ago. How, how much could have been to come oh, okay. and sit in front of the studio like we do and just a I'm Mayor Cohog, like I'm crazy and stuff? So it couldn't have been that demanding for the last twenty years doing these Family Guy voices. Um, but that was a long time ago, the 
60s man and he was look he, he was never in great shape then right he was in 1960s <laughs> right. great shape right. but he wasn't like some buff dude that looked no. good he was uh, but, you know, he's in he, there's like a one of those Skinamax movies I used to watch all the time yes when I was in junior high it's like hopefully not because of Adam Lady West Chatterley. was in this yeah dude Adam West is in it it's like one of these Lady Chatterley movies young Lady does Chatterley does he have one a or two, lady that like likes that. him does he have moments dude yeah oh yeah for Whoa. sure yeah, he gets wow. down. I watched the hell out of that Whoa. movie. Wow. Really? That's, that's early yeah. career for him? Or? No, it's late. It's no, that like was after Batman. It's like, uh, I would say it's somewhere in the 80s. It's Someone's weird when IMDb like somebody that, that you out. think is um, you know, kind of an <clears throat> uptightish person, you see them in a different light. There's this movie uh, that I saw on TV a couple months ago that I was shocked. It was called SOB. Oh, yeah, the Blake Edwards movie. Yeah, man. And Julie Andrews. They get Julie Andrews, like, yeah. topless in it. And you're yeah. like, what the yeah. fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. How does that exist in the world that I didn't know before? So you got um, uh, Sylvester Stallone doing, like, um, the Italian Stallion. Oh, yeah. I don't think it was originally called that. But, yeah. Right, they did switch. No, yeah, they, they changed the name it. after he... <laughs> but it is weird when these, you know, people that uh, are just normal. Good for you. It, it's not like... <laughs> it, it's not like... Um, you know Kim Kardashian, where it, it was an accident or something that, that, that the tape came out. An accident, like yeah. the air quotes. Sure, it was it was it was an accident. This is people getting paid money to be you know pretty scandalous that you think are. I'm too know. self-conscious to do something like that. I, don't, it's just, <laughs> I just really, I just could not do that. Uh, I, I agree with that thinking. I was thinking to myself yesterday, like. No naked pictures of me exist, and that's fucking great, you yeah. know. Like one time, a picture of my balls existed for like six minutes or something, and then I deleted it. <laughs> but that was because there was like a, a there was an accident <laughs> to my balls, you nosy motherfuckers! Like, how yeah. dare you ask why that existed? I, I feel violated when I walk past the mirror and catch a glimpse of myself. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, when you look at yourself like that, you know, <laughs> you bring it on yourself, uh, Carl. What? Uh, do naked pictures no. of you exist? No. <laughs> Very diligent about that. Yeah, that, that's there's good. none of me. I took pictures sure of the my market. asshole once because I had a like a problem, mm -hmm. you know. Sure. It's just hemorrhoids, it turns out. But I thought maybe I was, you know, had cancer or something. And when, somehow when I thought you, the picture you, would reveal you, that information. And when you it. looked at the picture, was it like <laughs> it I was so gross? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot veinier than I. I don't yeah, know. It was right. nasty. Didn't know what it was going to look like, right? I didn't know what it was going to look like. No, I was really... that a low moment for you? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Before, when it was a secret, it wasn't all that bad, right? <laughs> yeah, I deleted we... those uh, pictures as well. Good to know. Mm. Here we are. <laughs> was like, there are no I naked, can't believe I'm doing this. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing I want to cover before we go to our next break. Uh, they announced today a big fight coming up. Uh, it is a guy from the UFC MMA world named Kyle McGregor versus a guy from the boxing world named Floyd Mayweather. Money team. Yeah, the the whole idea of two different styles, um, two different people from different backgrounds fighting in one guy's style seems unfair. Like this guy from the UFC, he doesn't get to um, you know bash with elbows or um, choke somebody or try to take him to the ground. All he gets to do is stand there and like, <laughs> My question hey. is, why are why are they even fighting? I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't a mean, woman? Well, they were arguing. Money. They were arguing over a woman. The is love that love of a woman? Really? No, if no, that no. was true, it'd be so much better. <laughs> oh, yeah. But instead, it's just fifty million dollars only. Fifty As if million. million. The first time they're merging the two worlds together ever, right? No, they've it's, done it before. Oh, I no. mean, they've had like um, Muhammad Ali versus um, Antonio Inoki, who. See, you know, it was basically a, a MMA. See, I don't think anyone should pay for that fight. I really don't because it's just about taking more money from you. It's not sure. about the competition. It's not about building a, a career in the, in the sport. Everyone sport. loves a spectacle. Yeah. When the circus came to town, there was some spectacle that every person wanted to see. That's why they went to the circus. This is exactly what this is. It's just we don't get to see them as frequently, but it is what it is. Oh, wait. I mean, they, we, are, because uh, Billie Jean King versus uh, uh, John McEnroe in tennis. It's I don't like, think that happened. It didn't? No, it was Billie Jean King versus and the Bobby, Riggs. Uh, Bobby Riggs. Bobby Riggs, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, Bobby Riggs. But you still, I mean, you, man versus woman. That's a, That was a spectacle. No one thought of it at it, 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 it proving anything other than, you know, let's watch some two of the best tennis players. No, 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 no. They thought that. 
there were delusional women out there who really thought that this was going to give them like um, rights and they were going to be more, more. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So yeah. they really did think that, man. Like, they got those. Now, rights, are they though, boxing with with, with real <laughs> gloves? Are they boxing with boxing gloves or are they yes. boxing yes. with those cage I believe, No, I believe it's a legitimate boxing match. Yeah. Like he's got he's they, got make, they make gloves, a McGregor hilarious. put on boxing gloves rather than yes. the little things that they wear and the, uh, the little right. the little slap pads or whatever those things yeah, are. Whatever, like yeah. Fingerless gloves. Weight lifting gloves or pads. Still not the knuckle padded gloves so that you don't don't break those. You know Floyd would have never went for that. <laughs> no, because he he Dude, knows he knows that if he was allowed to be grabbed or like um you know if chokes punch were legal, with partial knuckles <laughs> yeah this would this would be a, a competitive fight but he's gonna fuck this guy up yeah like uh, he's gonna be now just, you got me excited I, I want to see it now because Hulk Hogan yeah. fucked up Rocky in that one movie so you never know hey and Buster Douglas knocked the Macho Man the fuck out wasn't it the Macho Man uh, Buster, yeah. Douglas? Yeah. Buster Douglas you're right the Buster Douglas okay so. The saddest thing about Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson in Tokyo that night many uh-huh. years ago was that the next weekend, uh, Mike Tyson was supposed to be the referee on Saturday night's main event uh, for WWE. So like he was supposed to come in and referee the match between um, Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh my God. Yeah. So, but when it wasn't Tyson as the champ anymore, they had they scrambled and they brought in Buster Douglas anyways. Right. Because because that what? was the thing they were they were promoting it as the champ was going yes. to referee the championship match. So they had gotten Mike Tyson was already signed up. It's like great. All you had to do is win your fight. Lost it. And they had Buster's get... from Baltimore too, right? Yeah, yeah, so we can't talk, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, not... yeah, yeah. Well, Mike Tyson is so eloquent. <laughs> well, okay, but at the same time, he'd had time to work. You know, they had, they had prepped him for this. This whole thing was coming up. It's like he sure. he knew he was going to be on on the WWF main event thing. So it was like let's let's I make sure. Love that show. It was oh so yeah, good, man. He didn't handle that championship spot very well. It it just didn't. I don't no, know. It was, it was raping and. <laughs> oh, uh, Mike is the champ. Mike, no, no, uh, oh, no Buster. I was talking about Buster oh, Douglas. Yeah. I, was talking, I was talking about he didn't even get to ride that ride. Mike very knew long. how to be a champ. He knew what to do. <laughs> you know. Okay, look, we got to go to our next break. Uh, we're gonna come back on the other side, and we're gonna get a chance to watch Dan's film, um, The Abolish. All right. Yeah. It's so, a great day for that. Uh, yeah, should be great, man. So, uh, we'll, yeah, you're right. So, uh, they look. No zipper heads got shot today. So, like, so we're fine. <laughs> Uh, we'll come back on the other side and we'll see why that comment was just made. Once again, I am so fortunate co-hosting with me, the owner of Hidden Streets of London, wall broker and urban art promoter, Danny Wood. What's up, Paul? How's it going? It's good to be back. Based artists exercising the power of words, sharing with the world motivational and inspirational messages. A writer doing time in Hollywood. Wordsmith! Woo! Hey. LA based artists working on an international stage to spread positive messages paired with zany imagery. Meg Zany! Hey. <laughs> Getting read on a daily basis all over the world and for any writer that's just living the dream. So th- I'm putting up words that. that mean something to me, and the fact that uh, they are resonating this with so many people, Makes or just you with just the masses. You. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually thought superheroes did street art. Zany Miss Zany. What What's your oh. deal? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I left the corporate world. I was there for eight Ooh. years, and I wow. just was kind of like, fuck it, I don't yep. want to be there anymore. That's... I quit being a jerk to myself, <laughs> basically. And, and Don't decided. be a dick. <laughs> Famous British red post box, right? Yeah. Now I'm guessing there's no permission given that. No. So parts do with like the, the monarch in terms of uh, you know, Elizabeth. So maybe that means she's a fan of street art. I don't know. Shouts to Liz, our queen. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do the wave? Do you, oh no, it's you like know a, how to do the wrist, wave. wrist, elbow, elbow. I don't, don't know. know. I got no idea. You not... don't know how to do the wave? Great to see artists from a city so noted for its creativity coming all the way to London to brighten up a rather dull mm-hmm. summer. Mm-hmm. How cool oh, is that? Great. Like Shakespeare says, words, words, words. Yeah. <laughs> Hey there, party people. Uh, I want to 
again send a shout out to some of our uh, people who are watching. Uh, thank you, Annie, for loving us, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Eamon, uh, the world class homie, uh, wants to bring up a uh, paper crumpling is um some fun event that we do here i don't know um hey ian how you doing man are you are you going out live on your uh facebook right yeah now? I'm, I'm live on facebook right man, now it's the incredible the world that we live in now <laughs> like um sometimes in the show here we have the show here called champagne party mm -hmm. and sometimes there'll be four or five people who are live streaming out all separately at the same time <laughs> yeah it's, well, it's, it's amazing <laughs> drinking champagne. yeah 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 drinking champagne yeah, and <laughs> it's a uh, dr Dre's sister so like it, it's no all kidding. these like yeah it's like all these like um uh, rappy kind of chicks. It's very interesting rappy. show. Uh, in fact, you should go back and watch last week's episode. It was maybe maybe one of my favorite segments we've ever done here on Grand Theft Audio. They left behind their notes for what they were going to do on segment two, and I just did their segment two. So on how to have a one night stand, and um, I just used their notes to have my own show. It was incredibly fun, and um, you can find out all how it turned into. Um, Dirty dog dick sucking. All right, uh, we're back wow. here on Grand Theft Audio. Uh, I said on the other side that we were going to be playing the video for the Abolisher. That's right. And um, are we pretty ready to? Uh, ready to go. I, did, I didn't know if we were going straight into it or if we were coming. No, back we're going to we're going to do it gay man. Like we're no straight at all. <laughs> <laughs> the nicest introduction. Douglas Graves Jr. had come to believe one must truly love something to be great at it. This concerned him because Douglas Graves Jr. was great at killing zipperheads. This earned him a nickname, The Abolisher. Do I love killing zipperheads, he wondered? No, decided The Abolisher. He only liked it. But the joy of killing Viet Cong was short-lived for The Abolisher. Bad news arrived from home detailing the deaths of his family at the hands of Mafia scum. On leave to bury his loved ones, the Abolisher's bloodthirst reached new heights. Big Fat Tony and Big Little Tony shared more than a mother in a debilitating glandular disorder. They were lone shooters for the mob, and the bastards responsible for the Abolisher's rage. The Abolisher had killed before, but this felt different. This he loved. Little Fat Tony employed numerous female bodyguards, several of whom quit upon realizing the severity of his gastrointestinal disorder, but not Sheena. She was the unlucky one. In order to fund his war against the mob, the Abolisher struck a deal with P. Top Books, who published his memoirs as a series of popular men's adventure novels. The writers peppered these books with numerous superfluous characters. A third world child sidekick, an Indian inconsistently written as Hindi or Native American, Dottie Hayes, a former supermodel turned mercenary. Together they formed the Abolisher Squad. There was even a cartoon introducing the lovable Mr. Nips, a lactating fantasy creature who stole the Abolisher's catchphrase. Embarrassed by the popularity of these trashy novels and cartoons and having killed nearly every mobster in town, the Abolisher began using disguises and set his sights on killing terrorist scum. The Mondari tribe had been well-funded and trained by the CIA but when the oil was secured and the puppet dictators were in place, the CIA quickly branded them terrorists. Reduced to their last AK-47 and a lonely meat grinder, the Mandari tribe had decided to end it all after a great feast. The Mandari chef prayed for food and was quickly rewarded. Before death by strangulation, the Mandari declared the following to the abolisher. I am not your enemy, brother. Your enemy bears this mark. Abolished. Hooray, thought the Abolisher. More scum to kill.
this, P-Top Publishing? Had the Abolisher, in fact, created his own worst enemy? An enemy that must be abolished. Although he was a man of few words, the following thought was inescapable from the Abolisher's troubled mind. What have I done? The Abolisher. Uh, incredible work, man. Uh, nice. Loved it. Thank you for... Uh, nice. Nicely uh, done. Yeah, okay, um, so I might have to ask a couple of questions about it, because uh, that's just do. great. Uh, Mr. Nips. Mr. Uh, Nips, the yeah. lactating fantasy creature. Uh, I, I, I expected him at the end to say Mr. Um, he I... is supposed to say he is. This is a, it was, It's a, a two-week thing, <laughs> and uh, naturally I bite off more than I can chew. Because in the middle around. of it, it says that he stole the Abolisher's yeah, catchphrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he is actually, and that will be in the uh, director's cut. Later on. As well as uh, the introduction of your character. Sure. Uh, you may have seen me in there. I was, uh, hey, we <laughs> were, there you go. <laughs> oh, that was you. Yeah. So yeah. He's, he's Lucky Pierre, a former <laughs> French legionnaire who has one of everything you should have two of. So he has a peg leg, a hook hand, and an eye patch. Wow. So yeah, that, it looks like a mine. Wow. Duct tape that leg back was. <laughs> sure. well, was a tough shot. It was hard to figure out how to how to do the peg <laughs> yeah. leg. That was no wow. computer generated Lieutenant Danism. No, that, you that, got to duct tape it back. Uh, well, uh, no, it's we actually a um, variety of elaborate effects. Yeah, no, he's just holding it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Finally, yeah. we got a, I got a piece of PVC pipe. And then another piece of PVC pipe that came off from it that I could kind of hook yeah. my ankle over the back of, and it was and uh, br brilliant with the uh, the uh, knife throw there. Oh, that was that's not Vern Troyer, is it? No, it is not. No, that's Vinar uh, Kovayan. He's actually he's, he's been in three. This the third time I worked with him. He at least was the titular character, I believe, in one of your others. And correct. M is for midget. M is for midget. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the villain in uh, in CC Unit, another, uh, another one of my movies. Or could have been L for little people. Uh, yeah. Well, it had to be M. <laughs> it was an M movie, and it was it was like pick a word for M and oh, make okay. something about death. And so I was like, well, it's gonna be midget moister monkey, and let's see what I can do. Uh, and a moist midget monkey sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> now you did uh, have this into uh, a two-week film festival that you yeah. did very well in. How many yeah. did? I think there are three wins. Yeah, we got Aaron uh, Himmel who plays the Abolisher. The Abolisher. Uh, won a runner-up, like second place, best actor comedy, and uh, the movie won uh, the second place grand jury prize. And uh, I got the uh, Adi Shankar uh, development deal. So I have a development deal with a uh, big shot Hollywood movie producer now. So we'll see how nice. we'll see what comes of that. But he, that dude produced like Dread and The Gray and A Walk Among the Tombstones. And oh, oh, really? So, nice. yeah, I actually, he's I totally actually rad. just recently saw A Walk Among the Tombstones. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. It's a very good flick. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of along the lines of the same kind of character that he's been playing forever, but... Uh. Yeah, well, those are, you know, that's one... There's a whole series of novels with that that detective okay. character. They're awesome. I've read, like, a dozen of them, probably, and they're really, really good. Are these, like, men's adventure books? Or yeah, more? no, those are, like, a, it's like a Private Eye novel mm -hmm. that, that's a, a... Lawrence Block writes those, and I'll say they're really... One of the brilliant things about the way that guy writes is that it's almost like you don't know there's even a mystery it seems like it's just interesting characters and this and that but it's unfolding you know yeah, uh, along the way it. yeah it's that's really it's really unique yeah that's yeah. pretty cool man uh, I, congratulations on the pro on the project thank you very much you know, and and I'm I'm you. You know, uh, well you know I, I really appreciate <laughs> being invited uh, I say yes to everything because I'm a whore uh, but no I really appreciate it man like um, it's it's nice like and that is part of my philosophy of uh, just saying yes to things we'll do it again um, I hope that uh, whatever you uh, decide to do I, I know you talked about maybe doing a sequel work maybe to one of your other projects yeah, possibly yeah I mean I want to do more CC unit uh, for sure and there's a bunch of stuff I want to do so you know we'll see sure man we'll see we'll see make something takes. real sexy 
think, soon. Like, I've been wanting to do a soft focus, like, sexy lady movie for a while. Mm-hmm. So. We won't be able to get Adam West, though, for that anymore, though. So. <laughs> we, we have a real nice shower we can shoot in out there. Oh, excellent. Sure. Cause, there's no, there's um, nothing better than the shower scene. Yeah, when we got these places, they have a lot of showers in them, and I thought we would open up to some softcore porn, but we just haven't opened that division yet. Very sad. Um, okay, we're going to go to our last break, and we're going to come back on the other side, and we're going to talk about uh, some other things going on. And, um, you know, wrap ourselves in. I, I, I know. I, I, I saw. I yeah, saw. I saw. It's fine. So we're, we're good guys. Cool. Okay, look, before we go to break, Carl, do you have anything you want to tell the people at home? Like, um, no, any, anything to pimp out or anything? Just because, like, a special moment for you? Um, got a couple of uh, shows uh, coming up in July and August, but nothing like this week, so. All right. Well, well, the second no, yeah, yeah, where's yeah, baby? Where's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, Sam has got some shows coming up. He's going to pimp them out on the other side, though. Uh, so, and we're going to come back. We'll talk about his life, and then uh, we'll learn a little bit more about him when we come back. So let's go to break, and we'll come back then. So, uh, All right. There's something about like an immigration issue too. Like, um, what do you think it was about? Well, uh, it was about how how ICE is going about uh, rounding people up. Apparently, they go after one person, and once they get to the house, they just have a field day. <laughs> just like start, <laughs> you know, you got your papers. Oh, you're coming with us too. Yeah. And ah, to the get... good old days of La Migra. <laughs> it's yeah. what it seems like. Yeah, yeah but, but you know th- that wasn't coming out for us. So that wasn't very scary. But now, like, um, you know, they're coming against uh, a lot of Christians all over the world. Um, well, I ain't one of those neither. Um, they're, coming, they're coming against uh, white people in uh, South Africa. Okay, uh, this, is, this is a terrible time for white people in South Africa, man. Like, um, they, <laughs> no, you know. know. What's going on? Yes, what goes around comes around, huh? <laughs> Oh, hey, look, what do you mean what goes around comes around? Like, did well, we... uh, they were kind of uh, making life a little difficult for everyone else for a while, so he's, I don't know. What's going on? He's channeling Mandela right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who obviously uh, was the second worst treated president of all time behind Trump. Mandela? <laughs> yeah, obviously the second worst. Yeah. Like, we believe our, our leader uh, impeccably. Uh, okay, so what's happening in uh, South Africa right now? Like, this is, it's terrible, man. There are now all these, like, um, black, 
people who are trying to save black people by going to the white farms and killing the white farmers. Oh, I didn't realize that. And yeah, this, this, this is what they're doing, okay? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Here, 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 here's a story I just read. Okay, look. Day Harriet Tugman thing going on, a little, more, a little bit more violent. <laughs> Decidedly more violent. Here's what they do, okay? They come into the house and they rape the rest of the family. Jesus. And they murder the rest of the family. God. And then they let, like, the white um, farmer go so we can tell everybody. And, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, used to have the the they used to have the dignity to, to, to kill you after they raped your family. <laughs> hey, that's one way of getting the uh, message across. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you spread. That's, that's, that's grassroots terror spreading. Yeah, right sorry there. for yes, laughing because yes. um, it is hilarious. <laughs> that's that's, oh, low, but, that's but, low budget advertising. That's what that is. Sure. I mouth. ain't going to play Sun City. And neither is Sam and... No. You guys remember that? Yes. No? Well, all right. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God! So yeah, actually, they're they're going and 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 uh, and, and the Taliban is off killing. Um, yeah. or ISIS is off killing um, Christians all over the all over the world. Like uh, it's it, a it, it's a dark time in in in, in the world. Um, you know. Human history really is dark. Is. Really sure, is. it's possible yeah. we're just bloodthirsty barbarians. You know, Sometimes there's a sunny Tuesday. Now. <laughs> but for the most part, like there are fucking things every day, everywhere. But now we just get to share how much they affect us so much yeah. easier. And like now, now you're a monster if you don't post um, my condolences to the people in London. Mm -hmm. Like the people in London are sitting there checking their Twitter feed. Like, what did Jake say? I, I didn't. I didn't you change know? over my little emblem that shows my picture over to a British flag no. to show support. It's like, mm. wait a second. Mm. I'm sorry. Hey, you know, I agree. I think we we we're inundated with too much news now. Mm. It used to be, you know, you would hear about. I don't it. think that's true. You don't think so? No, no. Too much news. I don't. It's think never. It's never bad. You, you can always too much have, information. You know. Okay. Too, too much, much information on what people think about the news. Like I think. Well, that's I mean, possible. how how much do we really need to know about what's going on in Russia? No. Uh, that's affecting ourselves on a day on a daily basis. We used to read about okay, it. Okay, we would what's read the last story you heard about Russia in the news? Uh, there was something about um, um, Megyn Kelly's interview with Putin. They, the keep last their, they keep their house pretty tight. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't really see a lot. We don't really. Well, see what, I'm, what I'm saying is, like, it, we used to get news in a much slower fashion. Yeah, didn't mean it wasn't out there. It's oh, no, you, had, you, had, to, you yeah. had to seek yeah. it out more. Like, like Dan said, it is a lot more more information. It's not all news. It's a lot of information, yeah. and the news are those important pieces that you may want to pass on. You don't need to pass on the entire. And according to Trump, it's a lot of fake news out there. So he's, he's probably right. right. He's actually yeah. absolutely. I, 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 I won't totally disagree with him. There's a lot of fake news out there. Um, he seems, to get, he seems to get more of it than anybody else. So sure, because like um, he is an enemy yeah. of the uh, the establishment. Exactly. So like the, yeah. the, the the Democrats who are in charge, the Republicans who are in charge, the media that uh, works with both of those people all have an agenda to keep us like yeah. you know in the place that they want us to be. And uh, Donald Trump goes against that by really having a whole bunch of things that are like wonderful for us on a day-to-day -day basis that the media are never going to cover because it works against their narrative yeah well i mean with you're right with social media we are getting bombarded with a lot of uh news and i think it's it's making people more i think it's kind of good and bad it's making people more conscious about what's going on in the world but at the same time i think it's affecting them in, emotionally i think in that's true every day you know, we uh, used to get to life. like prepare for the news. Like we would know at six o'clock, we're turning on the nation, mm -hmm. the, the nationwide mm -hmm. news, and you know, hopefully, you've girded yourself for whatever fucking terrible things happening. Oh, but, but now, and now it's like, and now it's like you get a text message that like exactly. somebody got shot or say, everybody in Jackson died or whatever. Yeah, you're on the toilet, like just trying to have a nice dump. And then, like, you have to find out that, like, well, see, 30 like people have I just got a, killed. I just got an update about uh, Scalia's, you know, still in uh, critical condition. So you, I constantly get these little yeah. things on my phone. I'm going to turn this off because uh, I don't know how it, you know, got turned on. But I'm going to turn it off because I don't want to keep saying, you know, every time North Korea fires a rocket, every time mm -hmm. in ISIS blows up something. If you choose to watch the news at 6 o'clock every day to see what that information is, then that is uh, on you. But now, now TMZ, I just wanted to see some titties fall out. <laughs> now I have to see like how what what, what terrible uh, opinion someone has of a stabbing every day. Their, 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 their format is changing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah.
It's, it is changing. They used to be really <laughs> goofy news. And okay, well, you know, a lot of shows that like that, that are like that, like uh, a Current Affairs, started off being something that was a bit of a. They they would pull the, these rip, rip these headlines and go mm-hmm. let's let's ma- let's take a crazy and make a crazy story out Delicious of this. Delicious saliciousness. Exactly. Right. But then you know, after years and years of seeing a Current Affair on every day, all of a sudden they become more legitimate. Then the news becomes a little harder. Then mm-hmm. you're seeing different uh, uh, talent going out there and be. Ha- being produced for, for shows, yeah. so I mean that's uh, TMZ. Well, is think, kind of, TMZ's yeah. growing into that. It used to be salaciousness. Now it's about oh, well, we're we're a legitimate news well, source. Now. More, we, we've got yeah. cameramen everywhere, just like all they're the major more networks. Professional, uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, that, yeah. All right, yeah. Um, hey, somehow we've ran out of time here on another Grand Theft Audio. Um, somehow, I know, man. The time flies goes, when you're having fun, dude. Uh, sure um, does. There's still time though for people to go catch you live tonight. Like if they want to yes. do that, where would they go? Yes, uh, you can come out to uh, 12446 Moore Park Street in Studio City, uh, a fabulous seafood restaurant by the name of the Oyster House. We do comedy there every Wednesday night. If you're a comic, you can get there at 9:30 and sign up. It's first come, first serve, and the show starts at 10. PM. All right. One of the better shows, uh, open mics in, in LA. Social media, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on um, Ian Salmon. Uh, actually, Facebook.com slash Real Comedy. Uh, my uh, Instagram is I Salmon, like your eyeball, E Y E S A L M O N. And that's uh, Instagram. And my Twitter is Salmon Ian. And uh, my address. And <laughs> sure. So you can also go, ca- go catch him on YouTube. Uh, I was watching some clips on there earlier. Uh, very funny stuff, man. So thank um, you, thank you, thank um, you, and thank you guys for having me on the show. Uh, our pleasure. I, thank you. Thank like, you I love thank unsolicited, you. unsolicited uh, opportunities. Well, uh, we really yeah. appreciate you coming in, man. Thank you, uh, Dan. Where can people learn more about you? Oh, geez, I don't know. That's a good question. I have a, I have a Twitter. It's Fustfic at Fustfic. All right. It's like fist fuck, but with sure. the. Uh, Vowels reversed. <laughs> I can dig it, man. Uh, nice. Once again, congratulations on the abolisher. Thank you and very much. Wish you the it's best shared, of success. Uh, look, success. Look forward to seeing where that what that five thousand dollars develops into. Sure. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. Uh, Carl, uh, <laughs> where can people learn more about you? Uh, RadioTitans.com and CarlKozlowski.com. Uh, Brant, anything? Nope. All right, for me, I'm going to say um, <laughs> last week we went out to Never bar is. wrestling. Uh, it was oh, get drunk, right. watch Dude, wrestling. Uh, I want to go with incredible. you, man. Uh, we're thinking about doing the same thing, with, but with weed. So, but keep it a secret. Yes. Um, also, this week is going to be a terrible heat wave in Los Angeles. So get your air conditioning in order because um, it's going to set records all across California. They're expecting the hottest weather ever in Death Valley as it hits 122 degrees here in Los Angeles. Uh, that's basically it for me. Wait, I will it's be... supposed to be 122. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I said that wrong. 122 uh. degrees in um, Death Valley. Okay. Not Thank you. In Los, Los, Angeles, in Los Angeles, Angeles expecting like, about 105. 105. I mean, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 105. A lot of dead people around. Yeah, uh, dead people lastly, uh, I want to say that I get to go out to my favorite addiction again this weekend as I managed to get Pro <laughs> Wrestling Gorilla tickets for the first time in two years. So I'm super what? excited about that. And it's the hardest ticket to hit in Los Angeles, man. They sell out in under a minute every time. Wow. So uh, PWG, I'm on my way up to you. And um, keep it moist because um, I'm ready to get in there. <laughs> no. Yeah.